This is Teachable Moments with April podcast, and you guessed it, I'm your host, April. If you're a returning listener and a part of the Teachable Moments with April podcast family, welcome back. For those of you who are checking me out for the first time, well, hello and welcome. To everyone listening, look for the Teachable Moments that are all around you. Enjoy. I wanted to share with you one of my um, favorite um, devotionals from Our Daily Bread from um, October, October 29th to be exact. And it's entitled, You Can Trust God by Karen H. And it's based on the book of Psalms 9, 10. Those who know your name trust in you. When my cat, Mickey, had an eye infection, I put eye drops in his eyes daily. As soon as I placed him on the bathroom counter, he'd sit, he'd look at me with frightened little eyes and brace himself for the spurt of liquid. Good boy, I'd murmur. Even though he didn't understand what I was doing, he never jumped off, he never hissed or scratched me. Instead, he would press himself closer against me, the person putting him through the ordeal. He knew he could trust me. When David wrote Psalms 9, he would probably already experienced much of God's love and faithfulness. He turned to him for protection from his enemies, and God had acted on his behalf, found in verses 3 through 6. Now, during David's times of need, God hadn't failed him. As a result, David came to know what he was like. He was powerful and righteous, loving and faithful. And so David trusted him. God, he knew God was trustworthy. Now, I've cared for Mickey through several illnesses since the night I found him as a tiny, starving little kitten on the street. He knows he can trust me, even when I do things to him that he doesn't understand. In similar way, remembering God's faithfulness to us and his character helps us trust him when we can't understand what he's doing. May we continue to trust God through the difficult times in this life. Now, the questions and things that we're going to look at. Recall, I want you to recall a tough situation when God showed you his love and his faithfulness. What else did you learn about his character? And how can this encourage you today? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you're always faithful. Help me trust you. Let difficult times draw me closer, ever closer to you. Aid, small but mighty agents of change, the nonprofit underdogs who always overachieve. Now, we started with a huge mission end illegal wildlife trade, and our strategy the power of persuasion. With innovative ad campaigns that leveraged global icons, not to mention hundreds of millions of dollars in donated media to change behavior and inspire new social norms. But we didn't stop there because there's so much more work to do. After all, so many iconic and critical ocean habitats lack adequate protection. So we took to the seas 
with a strategic and collaborative marine program that empowers local partners and coastal communities to protect their own waters. And with breakthrough campaigns, we're shifting perceptions and galvanizing action by showing people simple ways to make huge climate impacts. Since day one, we've been inspiring change to aid wildlife and their vital habitats. It's a huge challenge and we can't do it alone. So join us because together it's wild what we can do. So my second favorite uh, devotional from Our Daily Bread from uh, the month of October was October 20th, and it was entitled In the Garden by Allison Keita, and it's based on Genesis 2.8. The Lord God had planted a garden in the east, in Eden, and there he put the man he had formed. My dad loved being outdoors and God's creation, camping, fishing, and rock hunting. He also enjoyed working in his yard and garden, but it took lots of work. He spent hours pruning, hoeing, planting seeds or flowers, pulling weeds, mowing the lawn, and watering the yard and garden. The results were worth it. A landscaped lawn, tasty tomatoes, and beautiful peace roses. Every year, he pruned the roses close to the ground, and every year they grew back, filling the senses with their fragrance and their sheer beauty. Now in Genesis, we read of the Garden of Eden. When Adam and Eve lived, they thrived and they walked with God. There, God made all kinds of trees grow out of the ground, trees that were pleasing to the eye and good for food. Now, I imagine that perfect garden also included beautiful, sweet-smelling flowers, perhaps even roses, minus the thorns. Now, after Adam and Eve's rebellion against God, they were expelled from the garden and needed to plant and care for their own gardens, which meant breaking up hard ground, battling with the thorns, and other challenges. Yet God continued to provide for them, and He didn't leave humanity without the beauty of creation to draw us to Him again, found in Romans 1.20. The flowers in the garden remind us of God's continued love and promise of a renewed creation and symbols of hope and comfort. Here are two questions. <clears throat> when was creation drawn? Okay. When has creation drawn you to praise the creator? And how do you see God in creation? let us pray. Dear God, thank you for the many reminders of you in creation, and thank you for beauty among the thorns. You were just listening to Teachable Moments with April podcast. I truly hope you enjoyed this episode. We invite you to stay connected with us on our other social media platforms such as TikTok, Pinterest, Instagram, Threads, and YouTube. Also, check us out on our official podcast landing page on podpage.com slash teachable moments with April to see all our content in one place. You can leave messages and give feedback and more. Music